a lot of weird uh, human dog hybrids in, in anime. Pretty messed up stuff, chap. And JoJo's Bizarre Adventure continues to get more and more bizarre with every single episode. I remember just the humble beginnings of the of, of this series, where it was just like it was kind of like a like a talented Mr. Ripley saltburn situation, where it's like ah, oh, these two have a bit of a rivalry. Well, let's see what's gonna happen. And here we go. Here we are. Like seven episodes later, one becomes a vampire, the other one's fighting all these different monsters using all these weird, crazy techniques to defeat them. Jarvi, hello to you, Jarvi Rocks. Hope you're having a very nice day. We're just talking about peeing, you know, typical. Typical for my streams. But good to see you. Just about to do my review. Actually, let's just go ahead and get into it. Let me read my notes for JoJo. All right, my friends. Let's go ahead and move on to my review, my spoiler review, my scene by scene by scene by scene breakdown to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure episode. A last episode, there was a tragedy. There was a death chat. Another one. Another one sadly bit the dust. And we all, we've only known him for a couple episodes, chat. They were the they were the master uh, of um of Jojo Joestar, and it was Baron Zapelli, chat. Baron Zapelli, he's gone on this quest trying to find the stone mask, which spreads evil and vampirism across the world, but he realized that he wasn't going to be the one to find that mask, to stop its evil. No, 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 he was going to assist the one that would do it. And he, he, he knew when his death was going to happen, but he didn't know exactly when, but he came to the realization. It was in episode seven of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Chat. And he was split in half by Tarkus, this undead uh, uh, zombie vampire that's, you know, been dead for like hundreds and hundreds of years. But despite being split in half and losing an arm, he imbued JoJo with not only with his Haemon energy, but with his life energy, making JoJo powerful enough to stop Tarkus. But Baron Zapelli did make did did meet his end, and he was mourned, and he was and his uh, his body his body was was burned. But we also uh, came to uh, meet some of um, Zapelli's uh, friends, including his former master, Master Tunpenny, and we also met two of his friends where, where he trained at that monastery with Master Tunpenny. Dyer, who looks like Guile, he's like an even more swole Guile, with a hell of a widow's peak, uh, and Strizo, who is a very sexy looking fighter, Che. He's got luscious locks and everything, and they have joined uh, uh, Jojo at the at the request of Baron Zapelli to defeat the evil. That's the thing, though, Chad. They may have defeated, you know, Tarkus. They've been fighting all these various zombies and things and vampires and creatures of the night, what music they do indeed make. But they still have Dio. Dio has taken over this town. He's been infecting, he's been, he has been infecting the entire population, turning them into monstrosities. And we learned last episode, Chad, literally one of the last scenes uh, the sister of, of, of Paco, who Paco cares for very much, even though his sister kind of beats him. Uh, uh, she's been captured by Dio. I thought it was I thought it was JoJo's fiance or girlfriend, Arena. It wasn't her. I, I, all these women look alike. I can't tell. But it, uh, Paco's sister has has been kidnapped by 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 Dio. Dio and I, I'm sure many horrible things will ensue. And actually, that's exactly how it starts, Chad. We do see some horrible things. Not from not from Dio though, but stuff just involving Paco. It literally this. Episode episode literally opens up with child abuse <laughs> like we hear it before we see we hear just ah and we just hear poor Paco who's been going through so many horrible things these last several episodes he's been hypnotized he's been bludgeoned he was severely concussed by uh um Tarkus before chat. This kid's been going rough. And now he's getting a hit even more. He got smacked across the face by his dad. His dad's like, where have you been? I love you. Ah, I'm doing this because I love you. It's like, this is a very abusive family. Very abusive family and, and weird relationships. But the, the, the kid's his response is, oh, dad, I, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. I'm like, I wouldn't be happy. I'd be like, fuck you, old man. I actually care. I was hypnotized by a goddamn evil vampire lord. Why are you hitting me? But he says that he's happy to see his dad, 
The dad's like, where the hell have you been? It's, it's, you know, it's dark outside, okay? You're, you're way past your Betty by time, Poco. And Poco's like, Dad, where's my sister? Where is she? And she's like, ah, oh, she went out looking for you. And Poco is just, well, she got got. There's no, no doubt Dio, the vampire lord, Dio Brando, definitely got my sister, abducted her, and we're going to go have to save her. And they're like, all right, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll go to his castle right now. Everyone, JoJo and Speedwagon. And, well, not Baron Zapelli because he's dead. Um, but uh, along of Dyer and Master Ton Penny and, and Strizo, they're like, all right, let, let, let's head over there. And uh, speaking of Dio, we, we cut to Dio's abode. We cut to his castle where, as we all know, he has indeed kidnapped uh, Poco's uh, uh, sister. And he's basically offering uh, her the same choice or a variation of the choice that he offered to that poor mother. That one scene, that last episode was fucked up. Where, where he turned that one woman into a vampire, spared her baby, but then she ate her baby? Messed up. Thankfully, Poco's sister doesn't have a, a, have a baby. Yeah, we don't know. But Dio's like, hey, listen, uh, you, you, you know what? Uh, I don't want to have to hurt you. I don't have to hurt you at all. Like, just let me turn you into a vampire, and you could have your youth forever. Okay, I will make you an immortal. You, you'll be blessed with incredible power. Just as long as you serve me, everything will be great. And, and she's like, I just, I don't want that. You're, you're, you're a monster. He's like, ah, why, why these insults? Why, why do you insult me when I offer you such gifts? And then, um, like he, it, it, Dio, in case you guys don't know, very weird, very weird, because he's been like transforming so many residents of the town, and they're just taking on these just, some some just look like regular zombies, other ones just kind of retain their human-esque form, but then there's other ones that are become these just gross hybrid creatures, like uh, <laughs> Dio's lap is just filled with, it looks like, you know, a bunch of like kittens and puppies, but they just have human faces, and there's this one, and it's just like, master, master, she disrespects you, she talks ill of you, let us feed upon her, let us feed upon her flesh, she is young, she is but 16, and she is so succulent, and Dio's like, all right, I, I don't like, I don't, I don't, I don't need all, all that talk, no, thank you, and he literally throws the goddamn human hybrid puppy down the ground, and squashes it with his foot and just rubs it in there. He's like, my apologies. I, I, I didn't like the way he was speaking to you. But my, my offer still stands. Would you not want to be youthful forever? Don't you want to be immortal? All you got to do is just serve me. And she turns around and goes, smacks him. Smacks him right across the face. And the thing is, though, as we all know, Chad, Poco's sister, she can hit you pretty goddamn hard. And so, I mean, cause Poco, he, he's always getting hit by his sister all the time, even though they, they love each other, quote unquote. But she hits Dio so hard, it literally cuts him. It cuts the side of his face. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. And he, and he starts like looking up. He goes, ah, he looks up with his tongue. And he's like, all right, well, you seem to have made your decision. So be it. And so he, he you know, he walks out of the room. He's about to, you know, uh, he opens the, the, the door. Oh, uh, before I, I leave, I just want to go ahead and introduce you to my friend, Doobie. And I was like, yes, Chad, his name is Doobie. She's like, Doobie? Who's Doobie? And suddenly all this, these drops of water. These drops of water start falling on her, and she's like, what the hell? Except it's not drops of water, chap. It's saliva. It's spit. It's goop. It's whatever you want it to be, And She looks up, and we just see this Jason Voorhees-looking motherfucker just swole as shit with this. And it's, it's not like, you know, Friday the 13th, Chapter 3, Part 3, where he gets the hockey mask. No, no, no. This is, this is Friday the 13th, Part 2, Jason Voorhees, where they're still figuring out what to do with the franchise. And they put a, they put a burlap sack on his head. And this thing just has all this goop just drifting off his body through his sack holes onto the girl below, onto Poco's sister below. And he's like, oh, you look delicious. And, you know, he's like, ah! 
And Dio's like, all right, well, I'll leave you two alone. See you later. And so he leaves, and he just jumps down. He's like, I'm going to eat you right now or do whatever the hell he's going to do to her. He jumps down. She manages to avoid him, and she just starts running around the fucking room as he's just chasing her. He, you know, he's faster than her. Eventually, doobie, he gets his, his little mitts. He gets his hands on her chat. I was like, oh, shit. What? And the bag, like, starts moving around, just, just doing all that. And, and... Uh, and he holds her down. He starts, like, ripping her clothes off. He's like, oh, my God. Is he going to rape her or something? It's really messed up. It's really dark. And as soon as he's, like, his burlap sack is getting closer and his oldest drool or spittles, just seemingly spittles, just coming out of his, 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 his burlap sack, suddenly we just hear this conk and... All this blood just shoots out of the sack and then on the on the Poco sister. She's like, what the hell? And he's like, uh, Doobie's like, oh, uh, oh. And we see that an anvil, an anvil has fallen from the sky into his head. And like the sharp point is like poking out of the front of the burlap sack. He's like, oh. And then we look up and it's JoJo. It's JoJo and the entire team and Speedwagon and, 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 and Poco. And Poco's like, sister, she's like, Whoa, what the fuck's going on? She's like, get out of the way. Get out of the way. And so she, she, she gets out of the way. Everyone jumps down. You know, uh, Ton Penny and, and Dyer, they grab the sister. They make sure she's okay. And JoJo is like, I didn't like the way you were treating that lady. You're a disrespectful, monstrous son of a bitch. You need to pay for that. And, you know, a Doobie's like, I'm going to fucking eat you. And he rips uh, off the burlap sack. And the, the anvil falls off. It falls off. And we see his head start to heal. But his face... His entire uh, uh, face and his head has these just giant serpents just writhing across it, Chad, and like, like, gah, 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 like biting the air and everything, just trying to bite and eat something. And JoJo's like, oh my God, you're really gross. And so Doobie just launches himself at, 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 uh, at JoJo, and like the snakes, they, they, they bite, they, they bite his face, and JoJo's like, oh shit, and they're like, oh no, the venom, it's gonna like, you know, uh, kill him. Well, apparently, chat, uh, through, the, through the mastery of Haymon energy and just JoJo being so swole, he has such control over his arteries and blood that he's able to literally, like, squirt out the venom. He just goes, and it, and it just, just squirts out of his, uh, his neck and his face and stuff. And Doobie's like, holy shit. And, and, you know, JoJo at this point, he's just like, you've never fought a master of Haymon energy. And he does like that yellow overdrive, you know, uh, uh, fist blast. Boom, and he hits him. He hits him, and then he doesn't even explode. He, just, he hits him, he says, Go! and then suddenly, like, all of his body, like, starts to just melt. And all the snakes are like, ah! They're all screaming and everything. And he just turns into this giant just meat puddle right in favor of everyone. They're like, holy shit. Like, JoJo's gotten really, really strong. Also, it helps that he got imbued with the, uh, the life energy of, of, of Baron Zappelli. And they're like, you know, they ask Poco's sister, who's like, now probably has PTSD because everything that she's seen and gone through. But they ask her, it's like, where's Dio? And she's like, she left, he left through that door. And they're like, all right, let's go. So they run out the door, and they, you know, they're like, oh, he probably went down this hallway or whatever. And they go up into like the highest uh, uh, tower in, in the castle. They climb, they climb all, all the stairs, and they finally get there, and they see Dio. They just see Dio just posing, just like, mm, JoJo, on, on the balcony. And JoJo is like, Dio! He's like, JoJo! They like to scream each other's names a lot in this series. And JoJo is like, Dio, you, you will pay for everything that you've done to this innocent town. You know, these, these villagers, uh, they, they, they should not have uh, 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 dealt with your, your, your evil. That was unfair to them. And Dio is like, they are but worms beneath my boots, JoJo. They are, they are nothing to me. And you are nothing to me, brother. He's like, I will defeat you, brother. And JoJo is about to square off. Right with with Dio, but then all of a sudden Dyer, Dyer, who the guy that looks like Guile from Street Fighter, he's like, no, 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 jo Jojo, I understand that you got your issues with with Dio, but he killed my best friend Baron Zapelli, Baron Zapelli, and I wish to engage with him first. And Jojo's like, o -o okay, but he's pretty dangerous. And Dyer is like, I'm pretty dangerous. And so then um, he starts to do this like weird technique. Or he starts almost like walking like really slowly. And Dio's just like, what the hell are you doing? What's with your sleepy waddle walk? <laughs> 
just that was very funny. And uh, he starts like vibrating Dyer, and he becomes like it's like it's like uh, an illusion. Now there's like three of him, and Dio's is like, okay, I think I. I think it's the middle one, but then suddenly, and it's, oh, it's a ruse, it's a ruse, though, because then Dyer just launches himself, and he wants to do that uh, that split kick again. He's going to do that split kick that he did to JoJo at the end of episode seven, and he he does just that, but Dio catches it, but, you know, after, he, you know, he, he grabs, you know, both of his um, his feet. His legs, his, he's gone by the ankles. Uh, but then Dyer's like powering up this Haymon energy, you know, overdrive blast. Like, I'm going to get you right here, you son of a bitch. You're not going to be able to survive this. But Dio, he just like, <laughs> he just starts laughing. Everyone's like, why the hell is he, he laughing? Well, apparently Dio, he's been, um, he's been studying elemental magic chat. You know, he wants to expand his power set as much as possible. And he seems to be very partial to ice magic. And so he literally starts freezing the feet, the ankles, the, the legs, and the dick. And the dick chat of, of, of Dyer. Dyer's like, my dick and suddenly the ice just starts crawling up all across his torso and and his arms and basically the only thing that's like not frozen his head he's like i'm so cold and Dio's like and now you will die fool and he smashes him he smashes the legs and torso and Dyer explodes. He shatters. He shatters all across the room. And we, everyone's like, oh, my God, he killed Dyer. And we see just Dyer's head just because there's, like, also, like, these huge, like, pots of roses and flowers everywhere. And, he, and his head f falls into this flower pot, this, this, this uh, flower bed of roses. He's like, ah, like that. And, D and JoJo's like, you son of a bitch, you'll pay for that. But then we just didn't deal. He starts laughing like, ah, he was a fool. He, could, he thought he could defeat me. This is the greatest of you warriors. It's was like, useless. He also says, useless, useless, useless a lot in this episode. He's like, he was useless. Just like you, brother. Um, but, but, uh, uh, apparently, Dyer's not alive. He's just like, ah, 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 and he manages to, he, <laughs> He bites off a rose. He bites off a rose and is like chewing it and goes, patooey, and he spits it. He spits the rose at, at Dio, but he infuses it with Haymon energy, and Dio is just like has no time to react. He's like, wait, what? And the thing goes, like the rose goes, the stem shoots right into his eyeball, and he's like, ah, Fuck it! This is the most I've ever seen this Dio like really frustrated. Other than that time when you know he um he first became a vampire, he's like, what the hell's going on? But when he gets in with the like for the rest of the episode, he's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, god damn it, that hurts. <laughs> he's constantly fidgeting and trying to get whatever the shit is out of his eye, and he's very pissed off about that. And he's like, fuck, hold on, hold on, and he literally. He literally's like, time out, time out, time out. He backs up. He's like, zombies, fucking help me. And all the zombie vampires pop up, and they start attacking everybody at this point. And, and JoJo looks over at Dyer. He's just like, I had, to, I had to rub some dirt in his eye. And he dies. And poor, poor Dyer, Chad. We've only known him for, I don't know, I guess technically... Like, I don't know, maybe like a third of an episode because he came in like the last like ten, like the last five minutes of this one. He's in like the first 10 minutes. So I was like, eh, about, about a third or a half. But Dyer, sadly, he, he died, Chad. Dyer is now dead. And uh, Dio has summoned all these zombies to attack because he's, he, yeah, maybe he's allergic to flowers for all I know. I don't know. But he's like, oh, my eyes. It's very, very itchy. And everyone starts uh, um, uh, battling these, these, these zombies. And they're all like, D -d -d Jojo, go and attack Dio. Go get him. And so Jojo finally gauges um, a Dio in battle who does manage to get the rose stem out of his eye. But he's very upset about it. And he's like, you cannot defeat me, brother. All right. It was, it's not going to work. All right, there's nothing, the, the, none of your abilities can match the strength of my vampiric powers. And JoJo's like, but I got a sword now. And Dio's like, oh shit, you got a sword? I did not plan for that at all. And it's the sword that he got from Buford Chat, yeah, which was one of um, Dio's zombie knights that he, uh, that he resurrected. But unlike Tarkus, Buford was an honorable man, and he gave his sword luck 
to uh, JoJo, and he named it Pluck, and I guess that made it stronger or something. I don't know. He also imbued it with his honorable blood, which I also gave it a power-up of some sort. But uh, JoJo's like, yeah, I got a sword. You can't fucking uh, stop this. And so he cuts off Dio's arm. He's like, oh, oh. So he's got like a little stub. And then all of a sudden, JoJo then, uh, he just puts the sword all the way back and thaw, and he hits he hits Dio right on the top of his head and slowly little by little he's cutting Dio right down the middle chance like it's like he's splitting him in two vertically until it rests until it rests on his dick region on his groin like I'm not joking by the way I'm not exaggerating that it's literally stuck there he's like oh my dick and the thing is uh, Jojo, he's using the last of his strength to cut through his his nether regions, but it's just stuck, Chad, stuck on something. He's like, what the hell is going on? But he realizes, like, oh, it's not actually stuck on the meat, the the dick meat of, of Dio. No, his he realizes his hands have been frozen. He's like, oh, no. He's like, yes, I've I've managed to uh, 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 <laughs> pump my my ice magic through my groin into your hands, Jojo. Fool, you're useless, useless, useless. And Jojo's like, oh, no. And then uh, Dio, he then, even though he's like, he's also flopping around now because his body's been nearly cut in two. And he 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 manages to uh, uh, use the arteries in his one arm that got cut off. And it, they all kind of like crawl on the ground and they attach to his other arm and slowly get like dragged back to him and starts healing. But then he uses his free hand to uh, shove his fingers into the neck of, of Jojo. And he like rips out like a chunk of neck meat and he begins like sucking out the, his sweet essence, his sweet human essence, his blood. And then he does like a really fucked up scene where... Uh, or a little thing here where he starts playing with JoJo's, like, arteries. Like, he starts pulling on them, and you see the tubes, and he's like, ooh, I love the way they feel between my fingers. There's something oh so special about a JoJo. And JoJo's like, all right, I got to get out of here because he's going he's gonna, to, like, rip out my, my arteries, and I'm going to bleed to death. And I won't be able to use Haymon energy anymore, which is a big issue. And so what he... <laughs> What he does is he manages to, because Dio is still kind of like cut in two at this point. And so Dio starts kind of like moving, uh, or Jojo starts moving Dio a little bit, a little to the left. And, and Dio's like, ah, ah. And he, he, he balances the, the sword, the blade, the, the blade uh, over this open flame. This, because there's like a bunch of, you know, uh, braziers everywhere. And he has the sword over there. And I guess the heat from the sword, it goes down from the sword and it goes into JoJo's hands and it begins melting the ice. And Dio's like, no, you can't do that. And so then JoJo manages to, to free his hands and he powers up a fucking punch and he goes, bah! But Dio manages to get out of the sword. He's like, okay, well, let me move out of the way. He jumps back and he's all floppy and stuff now. And it's like, it's a bit of a bit of a... An issue form, but the punch does hit him, but but it, it doesn't do as, as much damage as everyone would like, and everyone else is just busy fighting the zombies and shit, right? Speedwagon's useless. Speedwagon's just narrating everyone's fucking battle, but he you know he's he's he behind you know Jojo at this point. He's like, are you okay, man? He's like, hold on, give me a second, and he starts ugh, he starts squirting all the the Dio of venom out of his neck, all the vampiric venom. And then Dio's like, give me a goddamn... And he's, by the way, his eye's like, ah, my eye. Like, that's his major concern. Even though he's literally split in two, and, like, a sword was, like, rusting on his dick meat, he's still angry about his eye. <laughs> but he manages to kind of, like, hold on. He gets both sides of his head, squishes them, and he, and, he, and, he, and he heals himself. He manages to finally heal himself. But he's like, all right, Dio, there's no more playing around now. You will die here. You could not kill me. You could not slay me with all your power of all your might or that fucking sword. And that rose did a number in my fucking eye, which really hurt. But other than that, this will be your end. And so then they both basically power up their, like, final attacks. And they both just, ah, they charge at one another. But, you know, apparently JoJo, he just, he just had a, a just enough energy. Just enough energy 
in this in this in this last attack that when he just fucking he hits he hits Dio so goddamn hard that he suddenly like right in the chest and I guess that was enough to do it. Instead of you know uh, uh, using a stake on a vampire, just punch him. Just punch him right in the fucking chest, right here in the left breast region, and it just like explodes Dio's heart. He's like, ah, ah, and, and because his uh, vampiric blood, I guess, has been disrupted, he can't control his his body, and suddenly he just literally starts melting and disintegrating. He's like, ah, ah, and like he's stumbling and walking around and stuff, and like his legs fall, like they. They start getting all goopy, and he backs up. He's like, "Oh!" and he and he falls uh, over this balcony, and he just he just can't he can't um, maintain his corporeal form. And he's like, "If I'll die, you'll face my ultimate attack." And then he 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 charges his eyeball, his right eyeball that's been really really itchy this entire time, and it shoots out like this. Very powerful laser beam and just bing, it just cuts across the sky. Even it even like cuts uh, like parts of the towers of the castle and the clouds. And it does pierce JoJo's hand. He's like, ah, and it really hurts. But we see we see Dio just continuing to tumble and tumble. I would have made sure to get that body though. I want to make sure he's fucking dead. But he just starts tumbling in the air until he finally disintegrates and just turns into either ash or just goopy, goopy like lava. That's the other thing too. Apparently, when you when you're a vampire for a little while, you, you your your body, your insides become lava. <laughs> and so and so he, he just become becomes like lava goop. And he's like ah, and he's like ah, and he falls he falls to his death. And this is the end? I don't know. I don't think it's the end of Dio. <laughs> I was like, I want to make sure the motherfucker's dead. I want, I want to see the evidence. But he falls to his death. And Dio, he looks over the he looks over the balcony. And he's like, oh, Dio. And he starts crying. He's like, fuck Dio, man. I know you lived with him all this time. But he's he's been working against you. He's wanting to kill you. He killed your dad. He, he killed, you know, members of your household. He, he's technically responsible for the death of Baron Zappelli. He's fucking turned all these people into monsters that you have to kill now yourself. It's like, fuck Dio, man. He's like, oh, brother. I will mourn for you. And he just collapses on the the balcony chat because he's just been so exhausted by by the way there's like a lot of these episodes have taken place over a single night and so he's like fought Buford he's fought Tarkus he's fought a bunch of other zombies chat and he's fought Dio he's gone through a lot he's gone through a lot and he finally just collapses out of exhaustion as everyone else just you know runs over to him chat you know master ton penny and and the the uh then the, um you have uh, you have you know, Poco and, and Speedwagon. And they're like, oh, JoJo. But I'm sure he's okay, Chad. I'm sure he's just fine. But hopefully, hopefully the evil of Dio is no more. Hopefully it's been destroyed forever. I doubt it, though. I'm sure he'll be back next episode. But that, my friends, is my review, my spoiler review, my scene-by-scene-by-scene-by-scene scene by scene, by scene, by scene breakdown, Chad, to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure episode eight i hope you enjoyed it who else is here who else is showing up right now arrow senpai good to have you here happy fourth to you arrow senpai a pleasure clown freaks do a little happy tappy dino dance i love to see a little hoy the manoy a little hobble to the bobble indeed arrow senpai welcome clown freaks I know. I didn't like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this this show really does hate. Now, this dog was fucked up, though. This was like a weird human hybrid dog with, that was also a vampire. And so I'm actually glad it was dead. It was pretty gross, and it wanted to eat the girl, so good, good riddance. But all the other dogs in this show, all, all of them were, were nice, and they all met horrible, horrible ends. So, yeah, there is that. Dill Murray. Good evening to you, Dill Murray. I hope you're having a very nice day. Patrice Gravix, hello to you. Good to see you. Hope you're having a nice day, too. Well, that, well, and that for sure is the end of Dio. No way we'll see him again. <laughs> I love it. I love how, like, when he's falling, he's like, no, my reign. My reign was supposed to last centuries. I'm just like, dude, you've been, like, a vampire for, like, maybe, like, I don't know, a, a weekend. <laughs> it's very funny. Like, a couple of days. Bad Boy, this week's reference is Dyer and Strizo are together a reference to the band Dire Straits and Doobie is a reference to the Doobie Brothers. Oh, so this hood is from Elephant Man. Oh, is that what's from? It reminded me of the hood from um, 
Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th Part 2, when Jason had the bag head instead of the hockey mask. But I could see that. Malcolm, thank you so much for subscribing. 33 months of incredible support. Thank you so much. Good to have you here, Malcolm. Thank you also uh, for making these reviews a reality for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Winbox made cheeseburger quesadillas today. Which are really good. Ooh, that does sound like a good July 4th snack. Good July 4th meal. That sounds great, man. I like to munch on that, too. Here's something. Was that doll like the Full Metal Alchemist Chimera? The little girl and doll? No, it was more... It was more, um... Like, that thing... That thing is probably almost... It's like, that thing is sadder. This thing literally has the, the body of a dog, but it has a human head. It's like, almost like if someone's human head was sewn onto a dog's body. That's what it kind of looked like, and it was talking and shit. So maybe, it, for some, not as disturbing, but for others, even more disturbing. But yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of weird uh, human-dog hybrids in, in anime. Pretty messed up stuff, chap. And JoJo's Bizarre Adventure continues to get more and more bizarre with every single episode. I remember just the humble beginnings of, the, of, of this series. Where it was just like, it was kind of like a, like a talented Mr. Ripley salt burn situation. Where it's like, ah, oh, these two have a bit of a rivalry. Well, let's see what's going to happen. And then here we go. Here we are. Like seven episodes later, one becomes a vampire. The other one's fighting all these different monsters using all these weird, crazy techniques to defeat them. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. But very, very enjoyable. Very, very enjoyable.